to thank our Temple Choir for this morning's first hymn selection. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce our speaker this morning to deliver in our usually energetic, bubbly, and exuberant self our very own Reverend Sonia Davidson. Let us please introduce Thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Pastor Jesse. And good morning, everyone. Welcome to our temple and to our hearts. I am just so delighted to be able to use this medium. And we just know that it is working for us in a special way. It is a gift from the universe. My talk this morning is titled, Plant the Seed and Watch It Grow. Nature Never Sleeps. Therefore, I have the great privilege of sharing with you the approach to life which has meant so much to me. It is a science, a philosophy, and it is one that makes me feel so passionate. I am passionate because it has allowed me to face each day of my life with a freshness and each challenge with a confidence and certainty of good. In doing so, I know that I'm not alone. Many of you have had and are having similar experiences with our teaching. The founder of Religious Science and the exponent of the philosophy of the science of mind, Dr. Ernest Holmes, hosted a weekly radio program, which he introduced with these words, there is a power for good, in the universe and we can use it. A truly progressive statement for that era in which he lived, 1887 to 1960. This sums it up for me that the all-powerful, ever-present, ever-knowing, all-knowing, ever-active power we call God is available to do for us, but we must do our part. Comforting and at the same time liberating and empowering. There is a power for good in the universe, and you can use it, we can use it. A power for good. What it does for me, it must do through me. What it does for you, it must do through you. What freedom it is to know that there is always a way when to human eyes there appears to be none. What a wonderful thing to remember at this special time that all the peoples of the world are experiencing together. Especially so when so much of what is going on around us appears to be outside of our control. In his talks, Dr. Holmes took great care to explain how we use this power for good. We use it, he said, when we allow it to do for us what it does for us. Yes. What Dr. Holmes was referring to is the creative process. To understand this process and to believe it is to place one's spiritual foot, so to speak, firmly on the path to freedom. We are thinking, feeling beings. The mind is never still, even when we are asleep. We are wishing, desiring, hoping, intending, anticipating, planning, regretting. All manner of thoughts. Our dominant stable thoughts take form and become our experiences. We create our experiences, the creative process is always taking place. Our persistent thoughts become the nucleus or seeds that germinate and grow to become our reactions, our emotions, our actions and the things and people we attract into our lives. What we believe we create, whether we had desired it or not. What we pay attention to takes shape and form in our lives. The ability to think deliberately, to choose the direction of our attention, to have an opinion, to change our opinion is a gift. It is the key to freedom. This is in 
endorsed by the great New Thought exponent, minister, and author of many books, Dr. Emmett Fox. Birth, 1886, his words. Man is a mental being. To know this is the first step on the road to freedom and prosperity. For as long as you believe yourself to be primarily physical, a superior kind of animal, you will remain in bondage. In bondage, that is to say, to your own habits of thought. For there is no other bondage. End of quote. The Master Jesus gave us a hint as to what to expect from our stable mental state. He said simply and clearly, yet definitely, it is done unto you as you believe. Belief is the key word. What is believed except an unshakable, sustained thought. Thoughts are the elements of belief. Belief that is sustained even when the things we seek are not apparent or when they seem almost impossible. Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. In the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 17 verse 6, Jesus exhorts, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, a grain, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. Nothing shall be impossible to you. There is nothing impossible to the power in you as you, if you let it, he said. There is a power for good in the universe, and you can use it. How? You let it use you. Over and over with each healing, Jesus reminded us, according to your faith, be it unto you. In Matthew 9, verses 27-29, he said, Thy faith had made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of the faith. After he had finished one of his miracles. My beloved people of the planet, dear friends, faith is what we need now more than ever as a people of the earth. The world goes through this, this transformative period of earth life. Prayer turns our desires into reality and hopes into certainty of faith. We must pray. We must pray individually Collectively, we must pray. We must look beneath the appearance of COVID-19 and what appears to be the pain, the fear, the worry, which it has exposed. So if we are always creating, what is the use of power? prayer? Why bother? Prayer turns our attention away from what appears to be and reveals that which changes not. Out of the unchanging, unchangeable, comes forth life, joy, peace, holiness, abundance. We must be resolute in our desire for a world of oneness and brotherhood. Any desire contains everything necessary to become the thing desired. As surely as a humble mango seed contains within it the potential for a huge mango tree. And guess what? We can't make a seed grow. That is the rule of the law of life, which gave us life and continues to express through us as man. We can make an idea come to pass as what we desire, but can engage with the law of life and let it work for us. There is a power for good in the universe, and we can use it. Everything held in consciousness must ultimately come to pass. Emmett Fox reminds us. And he continues, there can be nothing in the soul that is not demonstrated sooner or later in the outer. And there is nothing in the outer which does not have some correspondence in the inner. Unquote. Every belief strongly 
and resolutely held is acted upon and acted out by the nature of God, the way God works, which we call the law. The law of God is always at work, indifferent, but receptive. Not judging, not condemning, not praising, just being. Taking our convictions and acting upon them as we give it. No adjustments, no corrections, just as you give it, so you get it. Every time, all the time. It is true that there are times when we have thought ourselves into difficulty. We are responsible. But we have an inner guide to which we turn for direction anytime. It never sleeps. Be still and know that I am. That I am, which is God. Be. Be still. Be still and know. Be still and know that I am, which is God. The Bible is filled with so much promise, pointing the way out of any pit we may, allow, we have, may have allowed ourselves to fall into. God is law, and God is love. As the psalmist said, excluding the constancy of God's presence in our lives, from Psalm 139, verses 7 to 12, where can I go from your spirit? Of where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend in the heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the utmost parts of the sea, even there thou hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. We cannot depart from the presence of God. Frightened, afraid, worried, Find some words to match how you want to feel. Wishing for something, but afraid to go after it? I have some advice from Dr. Tom Costa. He says, learn to live in a decisive consciousness. When you're decisive, everything comes together for your good. All people, resources, everything. Courage equals decisiveness. Know what you want? But you must be clear about what you want. Believe it is possible. Decide to let it happen now, not in the future, now. Live as though it were true. The good I am looking for finds me now without hesitation. That's an affirmation I would like to give you this week. The good I am looking for finds me now without hesitation. So surrender. Let mind speak into you, not merely speak you speaking into mind. Let it speak to you in the stillness. Let it speak to you. Then speak your word courageously. Then be still and listen. I am the consciousness of courageous being. Tom we have the authority to marshal our own thoughts. How wonderful to know that authority is intrinsically bound up in our nature and cannot be taken from us. Our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, knew it. He says, God at man, in man, is man. And Craig Carter, in a textbook, The Handbook of Healing, says, the more you understand your divinity, the better you express your humanity. Wow. The more you understand about your divinity, the better you will be expressing your humanity. How wonderful to feel, to think, and to choose our thoughts. How wonderful that freedom cannot be taken from us or valid. How wonderful to know that by our choices of thoughts, we are directing our own lives. How wonderful to know that by our thinking, we can and are contributing to peace in our families, our community, and our country, and the world. How wonderful to be blessed to know that with that responsibility, the authority is already given. How wonderful to know from whence that authority comes. Tom Costa, if you would make peace in the world, go home and love your family, he says. Charge yourself with love.
love with words of your own choosing. But here's an example I'm sharing with you from one of the students of our Santa Mind class. Her name is Andrea Fraser. I am filled with the power of love, making me strong enough to move mountains. I am filled with the power of love, making me strong enough to move mountains. So friends, go home and love your family a little more. Love your friends a little more. Love the passerby a little more. Love the one which now seems unlovable. Love the peoples of the world a little more. Love and be at peace. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. Now. There is indeed a power for good in the universe, and we can use it. Thank you once again. <laughs>